Hello everyone, are you ready for the grand finale of the BMW M2 Cup? We are here at the Hockenheim Ring. We've got spectacular weather and we are awaiting a spectacular race, that's for sure. It's going to be super tight and it's going to be very, very tough battle between Fabian Keim and Maxim Usten. <laughs> And I'm here with David Kolkman. You're the coach uh, of the drivers. And I mean, what a spectacular season. And it's going to be super tight, right, between these two guys? It will be very tight. I mean, uh, Fabian Kreim, the leader of the championship at, at the moment, he was just scoring so many points consistently during the season, a little bit like Louis Enkefen last year. And uh, yeah, he's leading the championship by three points at the moment. It's very close with Maxim Osten, who was the winner of uh, yesterday's additional race. Um, I think he has like five or six victories already this season and he was very fast uh, in yesterday's race, so it will be very tight. And I guess for the BMW M2 Cup, this is exactly what you want. You want to show that these drivers really have the potential to go up high. Exactly, and that's what we see uh, during the whole season. Maxim Olsen was very strong yesterday, what I said. And uh, I think it's a very good championship at the moment because it's so tight and also the other drivers are closing in on, on those two on the front. Absolutely, so we're looking to forward to a spectacular race. David, thank you so much. And Robert Heffler is starting in pole position, so it's fantastic seeing him here. Robert, phenomenal job coming, starting on pole position, but it's going to be a tough race, huh? Hello, thank you. Yeah, it was a really good lap. I really enjoyed it. But yes, as you said, it's a new day. It's a new challenge. But yeah, I will try my best and let's see what, what we can achieve. Yesterday, we already had an additional race. So all in all, three races in one weekend. That's pretty spectacular. Yeah, yesterday was a little bit uh, busy, but I really enjoyed it that we had so much time on the track. And I'm really happy that we could uh, made up this race instead of the Red Bull Ring. Um, but yeah, we have still two races to go and now we have to focus on those. Absolutely. Best of luck for the race. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Robert. And now um, here's the man who's second in the championship. He's three points behind Fabian Kreim and starting in P2 is Maxim Usten. Maxim, you're starting in P2, so that's a fantastic uh, starting position for you because Fabian is uh, pretty much further behind you. So what are you going to do to ace this race and hopefully maybe even decide the championship today? Uh, I think to decide the championship is going to be really difficult today. But uh, yeah, I start P2 and Robert had a really good lap. So uh, I'm really proud of him. And uh, for me, it's really good that my competitor is starting P9. But I hope I can uh, gain some points today. But the uh, championship is going to be decided tomorrow, I think. And also, you always seem so calm and collected, but now, seriously, only two more races to go and it's so close. What does it look like inside of you? Uh, yeah, I have a bit more uh, pressure now because it's coming really close and the price is uh, really big. So, uh, yeah, we will see and I will just do my thing and uh, I hope it's enough. You do your thing, I'm sure it will be. Thank you so much, Maxime. So best of luck for the race. And now we're going to head down to P7 because we've got a guest starter there. We've got uh, Leighton Fury there. And um, yeah, he will be starting in P7. And as Maxime just said, the price is really high. And what he means with that is that the winner of the BMW M2 Cup will be driving in the DTM Trophy, which of course is an amazing, uh, yeah, ma amazing chance. So obviously um, it's going to be between Maxime and Fabian and they both certainly want to win the championship. But this man here, let's find out if maybe he'll even be driving next year in the BMW M2 Cup because he's a guest starter. It's fantastic having Leighton Fury here. So hello there, how are you doing? Yeah, clean yourself, yeah. You excited? Starting from P7 in the race today. It's three races this uh, weekend, so pretty a lot of action for you. Yeah, a lot of time in the car, which is what we need for next year. Uh, but yeah, three races was a real bonus. And uh, yeah, a tough day yesterday, but today we look for a good race and uh, see where we finish. And who knows, let me just find out. Uh, maybe we'll even see you next year in the season. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think we'll, the plan is to be here next year. So we take your experience and uh, move it on to next year. Well, that sounds phenomenal. And how tough do you think will the race be today? I mean, we've got spectacular weather. We've got a lot of spectators. So what are you expecting? Yeah, the crowd's looking fantastic and uh, it's great weather to watch them racing, uh, which I put on a good show. But yeah, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting. I think so too. Well, best of luck. Thank you so much. And now it's time to get racing. So everyone, hold on tight. Do enjoy this phenomenal race. And here's your commentator.
Thanks very much indeed, Verena. Welcome then, everybody, to a sunny hog and I for the final weekend of the season in the BMW M2 Cup 2022. We've already had one race, as Verena said, with only one race uh, able to run properly at the Red Bull Ring due to the wet weather conditions. We had an additional race yesterday. As Verena said, that was uh, won convincingly by the driver, second in the championship, Maxime Osten, uh, with a victory margin of around about nine seconds, the tall uh, Dutch driver was absolutely phenomenal in the race, bided his time early on and then overtook uh, Fabian Crime for the lead of the race on lap number three with a good move uh, coming out of the hairpin. Then after that, a couple of hours later in the sunset, really, as the uh, light was fading here at Hockenheim last night, they had uh, a qualifying session to set the grid for not one, but two races this weekend with each driver's fastest lap time setting the grid for race one and each driver's second best lap time setting the grid for tomorrow's race. Uh, my name's Chris Hartley. I'll be talking you through the action this weekend as we have a look at the championship leader, Fabian Crime, who has to come uh, if he's to beat Maxime Osten in this race from ninth place on the grid. He has not raced here before. He only had six laps in practice yesterday to get used to the track. So he said he wasn't actually altogether displeased with second place, but he was well beaten by uh, Maxime Osten to uh, that victory, which was the sixth victory of the season for Maxime. Uh, so he's bagged 20 points for the race win he bagged another point for the fastest lap and he bagged then another uh, couple of championship points for qualifying second with the top three in qualifying based on fastest lap times getting three two and one points respectively that means by my maths we're down to just a single point now in for the championship fight between fabian crime and maxim oster they are mathematically the only tri drivers that can now win the championship uh, we've got Lauren Stegman third. He's 61 points behind, uh, but there are only 42 points still available uh, in the uh, race. So uh, that uh, points there. Not taking into account the qualifying that happened last night where Maxi Moston got a couple of points uh, to move on to 172. In fact, and within one point of Fabian Crime. So it's actually one point between the top two in the championship. It could, it's unlikely, but it could be won today if Maxi Moston were to win and get the fastest lap and there'll be an unfinished for Fabian Crime but uh, those are the two drivers that won all the races between them so far this season I watched qualifying last night and Fabian Crime went round and round and round and he just couldn't find any more time he got a bit better off as the session wore on he was down in 13th place halfway through the session he found a little bit of time but it was all in the middle of the lap the middle sector where Fabian was losing the majority of, uh, of his lap time he stayed out right till the end of the session but just couldn't come good I spoke to Maxi uh, Oston last night as well and he said you know actually there was a better lap in me there he missed out on pole position by 17 thousandths of a second he said I, I threw away a couple of tenths I was a bit annoyed with myself so more to come uh, one suspects from him uh, Robert Heffler, the driver that starts on pole position, uh, ended up down the order in the race yesterday due to a penalty. Uh, that was for uh, some contact uh, late on in the race when he was battling for a podium position. So uh, he finished fifth on the road, but, but was uh, pushed down to 13th place. That means Lawrence Stegman, uh, who he was only separated by one point in the battle for third place in the championship. Lawrence uh, has now got a bigger cushion of eight points so Lawrence Stegman in the 99 car on 112 points Robert Heffler on 104 as you look at the grid for this race so Robert Heffler and Maxi Moston on the front row Lawrence Stegman and one of the four guest drivers who can't score points in the championship which is worth noting uh, they can take the positions they can take the glory but they don't take the points so for example if a guest driver won the race and a regular driver finished second. The regular driver would get the points for first place. Everybody would move up one. So Colin Boning has number 55, the first of the guest drivers on the second row of the grid. Mark David Muller, number 22. And uh, Mikhail Makesh, who got his second podium of the season yesterday. Great drive from seventh on the grid. He got the final spot on the podium with a move on the very last lap of the race. Uh, so Mikhail Makesh. Uh, is number 47. He starts sixth on the grid. And you heard from making his debut another of the guest drivers, the South African uh, Leighton Furie. He starts seventh on the grid. He actually qualified fourth, but he's got a three place grid penalty uh, due to some contact in the race yesterday where he missed his breaking point. Bart Horston, the Australian driver, is alongside him in car number 15. Fabian Crime, number 43, the championship leader by point. And Tom Nittel, number seven, complete the top 10 on the grid for what he's going to be another glorious, I'm sure, 30 minute plus one lap race. So the drivers uh, lining up then, ready to go.
Robert Heffler, the driver on pole position in the pale blue car. 365 brake horsepower M2 cut cars. They'll swap cars, uh, are randomly allotted cars at each round. Uh, so there is number 43 with work to do from ninth on the grid. Robert Heffler, though, the 22-year-old, who's the son of an ex-rally driver and made his debut in the N2 Cup at the season finale last year. Is the driver on pole position as the red lights come on. Chris Hartley trackside to talk you to the action for the penultimate race of the season as it's a really good start for both of the front row drivers as they charge up towards the Nord cover for the first time in the race. It should just about be Heffler that holds onto it from pole position, but Maxim Oston is going with him. Out wide over the curbs through the Nord curve goes the pole sitter. And the gap is left ajar now for the next corner coming up. The next braking zone into the right-hander and it might be Oston going through to the lead of the race as out wide again goes the pole sitter and he might lose two places a couple of cars off there including Bart Horston and the championship leader Fabian Crime is out wide as well he's going to drop to the back of the field things go from bad to worse for him and he's in the gravel trap out of the race potentially unless he can get going again and it couldn't have been a worse start for Fabian Crime and as that happens his big rival for the championship title is in the lead of the race down at the hairpin so Maxi Oston into first place. There you see the pale blue car, the pole sitter, dropping to third. Stegman has got past him. He might be down to fourth place as well if he's not careful here. Uh, with Mark David Muller coming at him as well in the 22 car. They're going to be side by side, flat out into the right hander at turn seven. On the curbs is Heffler trying to hang on to this third place. And not going to do it, I don't think, because he's on the outside for the next corner. He'll have to give way. And from first down to fourth place, I'm afraid, for the Hungarian. But Maxim Oston on course for what would be a seventh race victory. He is right at the top of the order, right at the bottom of the order, having gone in the gravel trap at the start of the race, is Fabian Crime who's been so, so consistent this year. Just a word as well uh, to say that we are 16 drivers rather than the 17 we had in the race yesterday. It's because uh, the Belgian driver Jano Dow was involved in a crash yesterday in the uh, first race. He did qualify, but he struggled in qualifying. And uh, the news is that he's damaged his ribs, so he's uh, having to sit this one out, I'm afraid. Hope he gets well soon. Uh, so we're... Got the race leaders coming out of the sud curve at the end of the first lap of the race then with Maxime Oston as the leader around about a length and a half clear of Lawrence Stegman who's shadowing him in second place. Stegman has been on the pace the last couple of races. He was very much involved in what was a terrific fight for the lead of the race at the Red Bull ring between the top two of the championship and he got in between them in the latter stages. Then you got uh, Mark David Muller there in third place having had a good start to the race as well in the 22 car from the third row of the grid and there sat in the car frustrated as you like is the championship leader having to sit and watch them all go past still stuck in the race in the gravel trap still out of the race now one lap down as well but will Oston win the race because Lawrence Stegman is absolutely staying with him here so too is uh, Mark David Muller so to fourth place, really, the former leader and the pole sitter, Robert Heffler, led only very briefly on the run through the first corner. Fifth place, we've got uh, Colin Bernighausen, number 55, and up a place is uh, Leighton Fury into sixth place. 2021 VW Cup champion in South Africa, following in the footsteps of the van der Linde brothers, who he really does luck up to. Uh, they, of course, now racing in DTM. Sheldon fighting for the DTM championship title this weekend as the points leader. And he's also leading the Global Touring Cars uh, Championship in his class in South Africa uh, with the latter stages to come. And he has a re relatively comfortable lead in that championship, so he could be on his way to a second title, and he really will be a great addition to the grid next year if he joins full-time the M2 Cup. There he is in the background of the black number 46 car. Doing, once again, a nice job. But the top four glued together as it stands. And the longer it goes on, the more pressure is going to mount on the race leader, Maxim Oston, who's on course for 20 championship points. He's one behind by my maths. That would put him 19 in front. Where does the fastest lap point go as well? If he gets the fastest lap point, there'll be 20 in front. But potentially, there's still 21 available, isn't there? So it's not quite over yet. But it's not looking good for Fabian Crime, whose car is now being towed away. Leaders come through, and it's leaders plural because they're all absolutely together, aren't they? With only a two tenth of a second advantage for Maxim Oston in the 54 car. And then Stegman just falling away a little bit now in second place.
as we get a replay from the start of the race now. So off the line, the front row drivers did well, matched each other off the line. Heffler, for a brief time through turn one, led the first corner. Let's see if we can see what happened in the background to the championship leader. Not yet, but uh, we go back live and with four cars still glued together. And look at the battle for fifth place because Leighton Ferry, number 46, right onto the tail now of Colin Bonighausen. Both of them guest drivers, not worried about championship points, just going for top honours here. And then just in the background, you have got in the 47 car, yesterday's rookie winner and third place overall, Mikhail Makesh. The rookie championship still being fought for as well. Only 14 points between the top three. Stegman, number 99, is the points leader. Makesh, number 47, is second on the same points now as Bart Horston. They're both 14 behind and uh, with 40 points still available. They don't get fastest lap points. And whichever finishes as the highest place rookie in the race, whichever position they're in, they get the maximum 20 points. Another replay now as we look back earlier in the race. And it was oh so tight there between Bonigaus and almost making contact with the right rear corner of the pale blue BMW. Maybe there was a tiny bit of contact with Robert Heffler's car, which put him off line a little bit. Back live, still nose to tail then between the top two. One and a half tenths of a second as they crossed the line. Less than that when they got to the first corner, coming out of the Nord curver. And no change in that battle for fifth. In fact, Ferrier has dropped back a little bit into the clutches of Makesh in the 47 car. And we got his uh, second podium of the season yesterday. Mikhail Makesh did a great job as well because he missed pretty much all of free practice when the differential on the car failed early on. We got it fixed, got him back out, but he has raced here before, knows the circuit former TCR racer as we get Stegman now looking to the inside that's blocked so he goes to the outside won't try and get the move into the corner but he might try and out drag the race leader coming out of the turn now this is what a move that Oston pulled out yesterday to get the lead of the race but he's not quite got the traction and Maxime Oston in the green number 54 car leading the race gets a good exit holds on to his position top two just edging away ever so slightly now from third and fourth from uh, Muller and Heffler, then a bit of a gap back to Bunninghausen in the 55 car. And then big twitch in the background there for Makesh in the 47 car as he got on the accelerator in seventh place. He's got another of the uh, guest drivers behind him, which is Senna Van Solen, number 24. It's 30 minute plus one lap race. I spoke to Maxime Oston about the uh, tyre degradation at the uh, end of qualifying yesterday and how it was in the, uh, the first race. He said, actually, really good because I noticed his lap times at the end of the race were almost as quick as they were uh, when he first got the lead of the race. He said, no, I knew that the tyres would hold up here, so I was uh, pretty comfortable pushing the car. I knew they weren't going to drop off. So around the sud curve, they come, the front runners. Behind the top eight, we've got Tom Nittel, number 79th place. Jacqueline Kreutzpointner, who was hitting the range yesterday and had a non-finish in the 21 car, is 10th. Bart Horston, who was battling for a podium position, he got a tag in the race yesterday as well. He's 11th in the number 50 machine as one of the front runners in the rookie championship. And then we got Alessia Kreutzpointner in 12th, Aaron Venish in 13th, and Sean Fuster, who's had a change of car since the race yesterday. The drive through penalty for an incident had damage to the car. He missed his braking point. He apologised to everybody. And uh, he, in a different car today, is in 14th place. And they're just flashing through shot. The yellow uh, number 17 car of Patrizia Stalidzan making her debut in the championship as well from a GT4 racer as the uh, fourth of the guest drivers in the race. And there is the black and yellow number 24 car of Senna van Solen in eighth place, looking a bit more menacing now in the mirrors of this battle between Leighton Ferry and Mikel Makesh. No change just yet, though, and no real change in the gap from first to second, which is hovering at around about a tenth of a second. Fastest lap of the race at the moment belongs to the race leader, Maxime Oston, who is going to pick up 21 points as it stands. 21 valuable points and what would be a seventh win of the season and also a hat-trick of wins because he won the race yesterday and he won the sole race that we had at the Red Bull Ring. So this is going to give him a 20-point lead in the championship. There's only going to be 21 points available after this. So it would need Fabian Crime 
to win the race tomorrow, get the fastest lap, and for Maxim Oston to get zero points. That's if it stays like this. But somebody that might have something to say about it all is Lawrence uh, Stegman in the number 99 car is absolutely holding on to the rear tyres, the rear wing of that green number 54 machine. And there is a sad sight, I'm afraid. Fabian Crime, oh, so consistent this year. He's been on the podium non-stop all the way through the season as we get a replay of uh, in that change of car the number 11 machine is a yellow car yes they've switched to the white car today sean fuster battling away with the black machine of number 12 aaron venish one or two running out wide there as well you've got to be careful with uh, track limits uh, warnings uh, no track limits penalties yet but if you exceed the white lines too often you start to pick up time penalties now, a look at the inside. First real show of the nose here of the 99 car of Lawrence Stegman, who is looking for his first win in the championship. He's had a couple of second place finishes of late, one at Spa, one at the Red Bull Ring. Had a podium early in the season at the Norris Ring as well. Now, he's been knocking on the door of a race win lately. And flashing off the headlights now for Seda Van Surlen, who is right onto the tail of the number 46 car of. Leighton Furie, he's having to be a bit defensive here on the way into the turns out wide in front of him. There goes Mikel Makesh, that leaves the door open, it all bunches up. And the South African's going to go for it here, carries the speed around the outside and gains the play. So bonus position that really, it was a gift for him. And that puts uh, Leighton up into the top six now. It's been really impressive on his debut weekend, showed great pace in pre-practice yesterday. The race didn't go according to plan, but he was mega in qualifying yesterday as well. First time at the track, of course. First time driving these types of cars. And he's gone from front-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive, racing in South Africa, a VW Polo. And he seems to have adapted absolutely brilliantly. And in the background, another place lost there for Mikesh, who on the back foot loses one now to the 46, uh, sorry, 24 car of Van Surlen. So down two places to eighth position for Mikel Mikesh. And right behind him is one of his rivals for the Rookie Cup now, the number 50 car, white, with the yellow and red stripes of the Australian Bart Horston, who a few years ago was one of the frontrunners of the British Formula 4 Championship, and then had two seasons racing in Formula 3 in the UK, still lives in Northamptonshire in the UK, and something his first season of Tin Tops, the Australian. He's been one of the most spectacular drivers to watch through the Mobile One curve this weekend. He really does take the car to the edge of the circuit as Lawrence Stegman in the 99 car for the lead of the race gets oh so close now. Is he going to go for it down the inside? The door is open, but he's not quite able to outbreak Maxi Mostyn and the tall Dutchman stays for now just about in the lead of the race as Makesh is trying to look back at the inside of Solon here to get his position Van Solen though holds on to it through the corner though he goes a bit wide gets on the gas loses the tyres and Makesh in the 47 car is about to go up the inside of him and gain that place back so he gets one of the positions back that he lost on the previous lap Van Solen closes the door just in time to stop Bart Horston getting through. So down to eighth place for the number 24 car. Tom Littell in the background trying to get close as well. Number seven running at the moment in 10th place. Lauren Stegman on for 18 points if he finishes where he is in second place. Robert Heffler in fourth position will be on for 14 points. So the gap would continue to grow in the battle for third place in the championship by my maths. It would go out now to 12 points, having been just a single point at the start of the weekend. So Lawrence Stegman doing a great job here. Does he go for the points to make sure he gets third in the championship or has a really good chance of third in the championship? Or does he go for broke and try and win the race here? He's got close several times on the run down towards the Spitzkara hairpin. He loses out a little bit, I think, coming out of the final turn at the Sud uh, Curva, but he then reels the race leader back in and benefit from a toe around here as well. And he's back with him every time they get back down to the hairpin. So Oston leads, Stegman second, Muller in third. He picked up a penalty for a passenger yellow flag yesterday. Then we've got Heffler in fourth, Bernighausen in fifth. Faree in sixth, Makesh in seventh, Van Sol in eighth, Horston and Nittel rounding out the top ten. The Kreutz Point and the sisters are 11th and 12th, the two twins separated by just 1.3 of seconds as another luck down the inside comes from Lauren Stegman. He's really starting to apply the pressure there and almost sizing things up, isn't he? He's also on course. 
for the rookie win here. He's the leading rookie in the race. That's Van Solen and Horsten side by side. And Horsten has got the better line, but keeping the power down bravely around the outside to hold on to his position. Is Senna van Solen as nose to tail. The two leaders arrive at the next sequence of corners. Come through turns 9, 10 and 11. Uh, head next towards the very quick right angle 90 degree corner of the Mobile One Curver and come into the arena section here at Hockenheim. The circuit has changed many times over the years. Used to be flat out into the forest, but this arena section is fantastic. Putting a wheel through the gravel trap there, you saw. Uh, putting more and more pressure on the race leader was Lawrence Stegman, but it doesn't seem to have slowed him down. We've still got a tight battle for third place between Muller and Heffler, third and fourth as well. Makesh being ahead of Bart Horston means he would move up to second in the rookie uh, championship standings because they came into this tied on points after yesterday's result. So by my math, by a few points, by three points, Makesh is, it stays like this on course for second best rookie in the race would move into second in the championship 15 behind Lawrence Stegman with 20 still available so Stegman has also got to think about the rookie championship wants to win the race of course but he wants to win the rookie championship as well and every overtake comes with a risk if he doesn't pull it off if he drops down the order he could lose the lead of the rookies in terms of the race and he doesn't want to do that he wants to give himself a nice big cushion going into that final race, but try telling a racing driver that he can't go for a race win and well, you'd be having your words fall upon deaf ears. He's definitely got the pace to do so. And do you know what? Maxi Mostyn will know, who will have seen that his championship rival is not going to score any points in this race. So if Stegman does get out the inside of him, you would think Maxi Mostyn would, although you desperately want to win the race, he'd also in the back of his mind think, do you know what? Second place is also good. I don't mind. Second, third, I'm ahead of my championship rival. I'm going to move into the championship lead. And he might not fight it as hard as he normally would. Maybe. We'll see. Because I think the move, or the attempted move, is likely to come in this race at some point. Oston is just not getting away from Stegman. Oh, pretty evenly matched during the, uh, the qualifying session as well. So, Lawrence Stegman, number 99, continues to keep the pressure on the race leader. 19-year-old from Trier, who was the Porsche Sports Cup champion of Germany last year. Also raced in the German GT4 championship. He's keeping the pressure on Maxime Osten, who is in his second season of the BMW M2 Cup. But it's first full season. He did half the rounds last year, but still finished eighth in the championship with a couple of podium finishes. He's had a guest drive in the Porsche Super Cup in his time as well a couple of years ago and has driven in things like the Dutch Supercar Challenge. All this, and he's just 18 years of age, the former kart racer. So battle raging on further back for sixth, seventh and eighth positions between Faree, Makesh and Horsten. Cars 46, 47 and 50. And with the subplot of the rookie uh, battle as well between the 47 car and the 50 car second and third in the rookie division in the race at the moment and also fighting over second place in the rookie championship Bart Horston drawing alongside Mikhail Makesh now the Australian nose is in front but he's going to be on the outside line when they get down to the Spitzkara hairpin uh, he's got across to the inside line though he's found the gap and he should be okay now to get the position he's just got to make sure he doesn't miss the breaking point and through he will go so Horston then moves up in seventh place, that is for him now, accelerating out of the corner. McCash has to keep an eye on the mirrors as well because joining the party is Senna Van Sorlen. And straight away, look, Bart Horston is on the case of Leighton Faree and has found a gap at the inside. That's going to be two places gained in just a few corners. Unless he breaks too deep, which he goes a little bit too deep into the corner. He's just about going to drag it back, though, and he will get that place. So to the head of the group goes Bart Horston. Nice driving that from the young Australian in the number 50 car to put himself now up into sixth place with 11 minutes and 15 seconds plus one lap left on the clock. So we're well into the second half of the race now. See the leaders out of the commentary box window just coming, nose to tail into the sub curver as well. Third and fourth, not much more of a gap between them, just about one car length. So it remains tight at the top of the field. Nathan Faree just making sure that Mikesh stays behind him now as well. So Ooston leads, Stegman is second but leading the rookies, Muller in third, 
Heffler in fourth, Bernie Gazan is the guest driver in fifth, Horston is sixth, so we'll get the points for fifth, and he's also the second best place rookie with Fareed seventh and Makesh third place rookie in eighth position now. So an important move that in uh, the battle for second place in the championship in the rookie standings for Bart Horston. So he'll now get 18 points for second in the class. 16 points will go the way of Mikesh. And by two points, Bart Horston will be second in the championship. But there'll be 16 points behind Lauren Stegman with only 20 available. So Stegman on course. Not today, but tomorrow, if he has a steady race for the rookie title with a big lead. Not an unassailable one, but a pretty healthy one. There he is, right in the mirrors of the race leader, who is looking for the overall championship title in the BMW M2 Cup. Maxime Oston, who's been pretty mega here, absolutely destroyed the field yesterday in that additional race that we had. Bided his time, worked out the move, got through on lap three. And he's had the dream start to the race here where he got into first place on lap one and his big championship rival, Fabian Crime, uh, out on the very first few corners of the race into the gravel trap with a first non-finish, a first non-podium of the year for Fabian Crime. But it's not over yet. Here we've got Robert Heffler, the pole sitter, who dropped from first to fourth on the first lap of the race. When you start on pole, there's only one thing to do is win the race. If you can't win the race, at least get on the podium. he will be absolutely devastated if you can only finish fourth in this race. You can also see in the battle for third place in the championship standings overall, Lauren Stegman looking like he's going to finish at least second and maybe first here. Think of his first win in the BMW M2 Cup. But to do so, he's going to have to move past the six-time race winner of 2022. Heffler shows his nose on the way into the hairpin, but it's, uh, sorry, into the uh, turn two right-hander, but it is just a little nudge, just a little sign that he might be coming. He might be starting to put the pressure on rather than a real move. Super slow-mo replay. Then the tyres being worked hard here over the kerbs by Maxime Oston. He's pushing the car hard, but he has a very smooth driving style, doesn't he? Always looks to be uh, completely in control in the race. And now, pressure builds and builds and builds for the final spot on the podium with Muller under more and more pressure from Heffler. Again through the hairpin, Heffler has a glance at the inside on the way into turn seven, but you've got to be absolutely alongside there, otherwise it's going to end in tears. Into turn eight they come. Again, he's itching to get past, isn't he? He's just trying to send uh, the 22 car wide, just trying to put him off his line, distract him in the mirrors, and it's almost worked there, but not quite. They've certainly fallen away from the top two now, whose pace has been pretty relentless. They're about three tenths per second per lap quicker than this battle for third now. So the gap from second to third has opened up to about two and a half seconds with seven and a half minutes to go. And that's good news for Lawrence Stegman because it means he hasn't got to look in the mirrors anymore. He's free to try a few different lines and have a real go for the lead of the race without giving his own second place up. They're just coming through the final turn now. There you go, flashing through shot, third and fourth, fifth. Impressive is, uh, again, Colin Bernighausen as well. He's had good pace in this race, the uh, the guest drivers, and a fairly lonely race in fifth place, but he's been doing a good job this weekend. And he's only 17 years old, Colin Bernighausen, in the 55 car. Has already achieved a lot, including the sprint Porsche Challenge Championship title in Europe this year. Former international kart racer as well, Italian karting and international karting. But his first season in cars this year and looking impressive in fifth place. Just in the background there is the 55 car of the 17-year-old from Hanover in Germany, Colin Bernighausen there. Bart Horsten trying to come at him and Bart was seven-tenths quicker on the previous lap. The gap between the two is just under three seconds now. So Bart Horston's got time to catch Bernie Cowson and get himself possibly up another position and finish the race in the top five. Horston in the foreground. 
And the battle behind is going to help him out as well. As Mikesh and Fari go side by side. Mikesh briefly noses in front, but the South African stays ahead. But then Mikesh he pulled off some good moves in the race yesterday. Comes alongside him. He's got the inside line for turn seven. And the 47 car should go through here at the inside. Good close racing. However, left-hander coming up. That will favour Fari, and he will just hold on to the position. And watching it all go on in the mirrors is Sela van Solen here in the 24 car. So this great three-way scrap that we've now got for seventh, eighth and ninth positions. Absolutely glued together. Flashing the headlights is Sela van Solen. He's got a great pedigree in kart racing as well. He looks at the inside of Mikesh, but that's not happening on the way through the Mobile One curve. And they come up towards the Sax curve now. Still nose to tail into this slightly banked left-hand corner. Meanwhile, the leaders, the gap's just opened up a little bit to one car length this time through the Sud curve with just over five minutes to go as Maxime Oston looks to maintain this uh, margin of advantage as Van Solen looks up the inside, a big look at the inside of Makesh. Almost contact, he was the last of the late breakers on the way into the Sud curve. It made Makesh go out wide and this isn't over yet because it could all come to tell on the way to turn one here. Van Solen is feeling the quicker of the two, he wants to get past. This has allowed the 46 car of Leighton Ferri to pull away by a couple of car lengths, look. But nothing doing, and Mikesh holds on to the place for now. So, uh, Mikhail Mikesh, number 47, holding on to eighth place from Van Solen. But Van Solen, it's not for the one to trying, as we look at the replay here. Look at that, last of the late breakers. It was an audacious move, really, and it very nearly came off. Good effort from Van Solen, but the Dutch driver, in the end, remains in for now in ninth place tom nittel coming after him in the background as well when all this goes on could be a factor in the closing laps of the race in the number seven car super slow-mo replays using all the track and then some it was mckesh definitely went across track limits but in fairness there wasn't much else he could do because his line had been stolen so nose to tail in this battle for third place Muller has held on to it since the very first lap of the race. He's had four fourth place finishes this year. He hasn't quite got onto the podium. So he's determined to make that number 22 car as wide as he possibly dares. Two fourth places at, uh, sorry, two fifth places at Spa, two fifth places at the Norris Ring have been his best results so far. But he's knocking on the door of a maiden podium in the championship here driving a good race. Relentless pressure coming from Heffler, who was so good in qualifying yesterday to get that pole position. But for now, he's got a bit more breathing space, a bit more breathing space for the race leader as well. The gap's out to nearly half a second between the top two. A 154.7 for the leader, a 154.8 last lap for Stegman in second place. So the pressure that was building is now just starting ever so slowly to fade away. And Maxime Oston on course it's seemingly for another race victory and a hat trick of wins. But this battle is still very much alive, isn't it? And we've got uh, Makesh ahead of Fareed now to slow run through the last lap. He lost about a second and a half somewhere on that last lap. So it is now the 47 car uh, back up into seventh place. The 46 car of Fareed down to eighth. Makesh at the head of the group. Fareed second in the chain and now defending from Van Solen in the 24 car as we get side by side again this battle for third place on the way through the Spitzkara but once again Robert Heffler just cannot find a way through the Hungarian is trying and trying and trying but all the time Mark David Muller the German driver has his number he cannot afford to put a wheel wrong though because if he goes slightly wide anywhere if he misses his braking point by a few centimeters Heffler is going to be in and stealing that podium position. So two second place finishes this year, so he knows how to be on the podium, Robert Heffler. Mark David Muller looking for his first, and Heffler's got his foot in the door here. Look at Bart Horsten has caught up in the background. Bonikhausen through goes the blue 53 cup and into the top three. Back into the top three for the pole sitter for the first time since the very start of the race. But there is time for a comeback here for the number 22 machine driven by. Mark David Muller. 
would be really gutted. It's still his best result of the season in fourth. Has the battle doing behind between Bernickhausen and Horston? Still, Bernickhausen there, but it was only a couple of laps ago. He was nearly three seconds clear. Horston is clearly the quicker of the two. And Horston might be thinking, you know, if I can get past you, I might get past another one. We've got another one out of the race, I'm afraid, which is Sean Fuster. So he's pulled off into retirement. Driver OK and out of the car. So Fabian Crime and Sean Fuster, the two non-finishers in this race. As we continue to watch this battle, which is fast becoming a four-way battle for the final spot on the podium. Robert Heffler, having had a patient race, has spent almost half an hour looking at the rear wing of Mark David Muller, but now has to defend. And also having to defend is Colin Bernighausen in the background, holding on for now to fifth place, but with Bart Horst and all over the back of him. Here are the top two. The gap has reduced back down to three tenths of a second at the start of the lap. Here we go, Mark David Muller trying, trying, trying to get back into third place here. And in the background, Bart horston has got the inside line on Colin Bernighausen. He's going to go through at the hairpin. And that puts the Australian now up into fifth place. A really good recovery drive, this. And it might not be finished yet. We've still got another lap at the end of this one to go. And if these two start to fight each other, you never know. <laughs> Slim, but there's an outside chance of a podium here for Bart Horston. It's a bigger chance now, though, because Muller goes off wide. Tried to go around the outside. He put two wheels on the grass and he went straight, I'm afraid, on the way uh, into the left-hander at turn eight. And Cart slows and his chances of a podium have now been obliterated and I'm not sure he's going to be able to carry on either. He was going very slowly in the background. So that's all changed. That, of course, puts Horston up to fourth place now. He's got a lap to find a way through and get himself an unlikely podium finish here in the number 50 car. Started on the fourth row of the grid, but he dropped places on the first lap of the race. So he was down to, was he 10th or 11th at one point in this race? As about to start the final lap of the race then. Here it is. Game on for the race victory. Now, what do you do if you're Maxim Oston? Do you fight hard, get another win, make sure of the 20 points? Or if... Stegman comes up the inside. Do you think, do you know what? I'm just going to let you go. I'm just going to take 18 points. That's 18 points more than Fabian Crime. Plus, he's got the point for the fastest lap of the race as well. He's going to have a big championship lead going into the final race of the season tomorrow, even if he finishes the race in second place. Stegman desperately trying to get his first win of the season. But in the back of his mind, he's also thinking, do I, do I take the risk? Because I've got the rookie championship almost in my hands now with a big lead going into tomorrow answer about to come uh, on this final lap of the race and he has a lurk at the inside once again on the way to the hairpin you can hear the tires screaming in agony and protest as they break as late as they dare all the way to the Spitzkera hairpin but nothing doing the race leader doesn't give the option to Lawrence Stegman to have a dive up the inside Perfect breaking there. And now Bart Horston going for third place here. Can he get himself off the podium? He's absolutely alongside and he goes through on the way into the right-hander. Covers off the line on the way to turn eight. Still side by side, but Robert Heffler is going to find himself back off the podium now. And back down to fourth place. Terrific driving hiss from Bart Horston. He's been absolutely charging through the field since the first lap or two. And that puts him now up to third position after the misfortune of yesterday when he was battling for a podium and uh, had some contact that put him out. But this is a massive, massive victory about to happen for this young man, Maxim Oston, number 54 from the Netherlands, about to get his seventh win of the season in the BMW M2 Cup and move into the championship lead with just one race to go tomorrow in the 2022 season. There's the chequered flag. Oston wins again. Stegman comes home in second. And there in the background, it is going to be Bart Horston with a terrific drive through the field to round out the podium. He comes home third. Heffler in fourth. An impressive fifth place for Colin Bornighausen, the first of the guest drivers. And then over the line has just gone Mikel Makesh in sixth place. Senna Van Sullen in seventh got ahead of Leighton Ferry right towards the end of the race. So Leighton in eighth place, but still impressive. That's three guest drivers in the top eight. Tom Nittal in ninth. And rounding out the top ten over the line has gone Jacqueline Kreutzpointner, just a second clear of her sister Alessia Kreutzpointner in the Twins' second season of the race. And their uh, confirmation that having had the moment, was it damage to the front left? Was there contact there? When he went, uh, tried to go around the outside of Heffley, went on the grass, and I think he must have broke his steering 
there was contact and he couldn't make the corner after that and the corner after that he pulled off the circuit so a real shame that for Muller who driven really well for 95 percent of that race to hold on to third position but that first podium eludes him I'll have to have another go and come back and uh, try to do the same again tomorrow well a fantastic drive from Maxime Oston under a lot of pressure early on from three cars in the end just from one Lawrence Stegman and fastest lap of the race gives him a bonus point. So 21 points for Maxime Oston. By my maths, this is all unofficial, but by my maths, was a point behind after qualifying. And he has got now a 20-point lead over Fabian Crime, who fails to score in a race for the first time this season. Slow-mo then of the moment, the big moment that Maxime Oston took the chequered flag just in front of Lawrence Stegman, who really has been a match for the top two in the championship over the last few races this season. And then this was the big moment. Yeah, they can see from that angle, the heavy contacts. He tried to go around the outside, just misjudged it. And heavy contacts broke the steering arm on the front left of the car. I thought he missed the uh, corner at first off because he was on the grass, but it was because he was on the grass, but it was also because he only had... Uh, half a functioning steering so just about scramble through that corner and then in the background we saw him going straight on at this corner we realized the car was definitely going no further real shame for mark david muller as we get some more slow-mos that the big big uh, moment of the race so uh, bart horston who was almost actually at the back of the field after that contact with fabian crime right at the start of the race and then crime pulled off into the gravel trap must have had damage he couldn't get the car out of the gravel trap. And Bart Horston, he was absolutely plumb last after that, wasn't he? So effectively, he's gone from 15th to third place since the start of the race. And rear wheels spin, dig in. And that was the moment that Fabian Crime knew his championship lead had gone. Not much room to get out there. <laughs> Robert Heffler uh, leaves the room, but... A 10-second time penalty has been given to Bart Horston for overtaking off the track. So Robert Heffler, you see his car has pulled up in the Bart Fermi area, and that is because Heffler has been promoted back onto the podium. So a 10-second time penalty for overtaking off the track. Uh, there is the result as it stood at the line, but Bart Horston has just been given a 10-second time penalty, which I'm afraid, after a great drive through the field, pushes him back to sixth place. That promotes Robert Heffler up to third. It promotes Colin Bernighausen up to fourth. And Mikhail Makesh up to fifth place. Bart Horston then sixth position in the end, uh, despite the graphic there with this late change that we've just had come up on the timing screen, which is why uh, Maxime Oston couldn't really get out of the car because he found this blue car next to him, which is Robert Heffler. He'd obviously been given the news over the radio that actually you're going to be on the podium. None of this affects Maxime Oston, though, who picks up his seventh win of the season now. Seven wins out of ten, and he's had a second-place finish. And now he's got what has become, suddenly, a healthy championship lead. So the drivers uh, get out of the cars. So to reconfirm, Oston, Stegman and Heffler will now be the podium. Berninghausen in fourth, Makesh in fifth. Horston in sixth. Of course, that also uh, means that Horston drops from second to third in the rookies as well. Uh, so it'll be uh, Horston down to third place in the rookie championship standings now. So a fantastic race. Let's get some reaction. Yes, and I've got uh, the man here who really aced the race, Maxime Houston. And not only that, you're also leading the championship by quite a few points. So this race really uh, meant the world for you, to, uh, I guess. Yeah, I never expected that uh, this would happen in the four last race. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy. And, uh, yeah, I'm uh, yeah, it's shit for crime that he had a DNF. But, yeah, for me, it's really good. But I wanted another end, maybe, like a season finale. But uh, now I have to finish, and I think it will be okay.
All right, well, it's definitely still going to be an exciting uh, race, that's for sure. But the man who's making your life very difficult <laughs> was you, Lauren Stingman. Once again, it was almost like a déjà vu. You were breathing down his neck, trying your best. But in the end, is it that uh, because it looked like you had a sp the speed, did you not full attack in the end because you also had the rookie championship in the back of your head? Yeah, it was a really nice race for me, and um, I was not going to attack Maxime because of the championship. I need the points, Maxime needs the points, and everybody needs the points. Uh, and yeah, if uh, yeah, I don't want, then I don't want that something happened to us and uh, got the points, and that was all. all but absolutely, it made it very, very exciting and also it didn't make it all that easy for you, even though you still ace the race, that's for sure. And the man who ended up on P3 is Robert Heffler uh, coming from P1 to P3. But in the end, I mean, I guess you're still happy it was a P3. Yeah, I mean, I made a rookie mistake in the second corner, lay uh, breaks too late. So these two guys passed me uh, and also uh, the 22 car. And yeah, uh, I was trying to manage the race in P4 to maybe save the tires for the end of the race. And yeah, in the second last uh, lap, I made the overtake for P3. Uh, after that, I got a hit from behind. Uh, so the car was not that good after that. But um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here and tomorrow we try again. All right, tomorrow we'll try again, and that's for sure. Tomorrow is going to be super exciting, and tomorrow everything will be decided. I mean, uh, thank you so much for an exciting race, that's for sure. And now here's a commentator. Thanks very much, uh, Varini. Uh, good to hear from the, uh, the top three uh, in the race. Uh, so by my maths, and officially 100... 93 points now for Maxime Oston, 173 still for Fabian Crime, 20 the difference. And then Lawrence Stegman on 130, Robert Heffler on 120 in fourth, Bart Horston 105 in fifth. And up to sixth place after that retirement late on for Mark David Muller and Mikel Makesh on 102 points as we get super slow mos of our top three. He was first, he was second, he was third, he was fourth, he was third, he was back to fourth, and in the end he was third. Robert Heffler uh, in third place getting a podium finish. Laurent Stegman, there you heard from him with the rookie championship in mind, which he now leads by 16 points by my maths with a race to go. Settling for second place and another win for Maxime Oston, his seventh of the season. But he's had some great scraps and great sportsmanship between him and Fabian Crime. So you heard that he was disappointed for his rival. That it couldn't be a close race for him in the end. Top three drivers then called up onto the podium. As ever, the BMW M2 Cup organisers nominate different uh, members of the team to uh, help present the trophies. And uh, that's allotted and changed at every round. The biggest trophy, of course, though, is going to be delivered very shortly to the biggest driver in the field, Maxime Oston. Tall enough, even taller when he's on the top step of the podium. And this is going to be a real celebration for him. But first, the national anthem of your race winner. So the national anthem of the Netherlands plays once more. It's become a familiar tune this year. And the man that's won the most races this year becomes the championship leader with just a race to go. And a huge, huge advantage now going into tomorrow's race. Vadim Breeden is going to be the representative, technical representative of the BMW M2 Cup that presents the third place trophy to Robert Heffler, so Vladim Breeden makes his way off the podium and there is Christine Cooling who is the communications, head of communications for the championship, helps us and supports us in the commentary with lots of uh, useful information and press releases and updates and uh, Christine presented the second place trophy to a very satisfied Laurent Stegman and we've got Oliver Werner, the CFO 
representing BMW M uh, brand, which uh, celebrates, of course, its 50th anniversary this year. The motorsport brand, the power brand, performance brand of BMW. And Oliver Werner presents the winning trophy to the winning racer. And the driver with a big, big smile on his face. Well done, Maxime Oshton. So three different nationalities on the podium. From the Netherlands, from Germany and from Hungary. They smile, they pose, and they've got one more race to go now tomorrow in what's been a fascinating 2022 championship season. They're joined on the podium by Christine, Oliver and Vadim. And now, for the penultimate time in 2022, it's time for the champagne spray. From me, Chris Hartley and the team, hope you enjoyed our coverage of the BMW M2 Cup. Goodbye for now.